One of the main things I do on my channel is cover different things you might not know about in Terraria. But one thing I have yet to make a video on is the Terraria Iceberg, which goes over a ton of information about Terraria that you probably haven't heard of. So that's exactly what I'm doing in this video, alongside my own layer at the end, where I go over some things I think that should be in the iceberg. Before we start though, it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe to my channel, as once I hit 100k, Waffle Time will finally start up staring at me menacingly through my window while I sleep. The first section in the iceberg is the space layer, which will have stuff that even people who don't play Terraria will know. For our first entry, we have Terraria developers, which is simply just referring to the people behind ReLogic and Terraria. After that, we have Tutorial World, which is talking about how some versions of Terraria would have a special world to introduce you to Terraria. For the third entry, we have Terraria Forums, which is referring to the official Terraria Forums website, which is arguably the main place online to talk about Terraria. Next up, we have PewDiePie Terraria Playthrough, which is referring to the Terraria playthrough PewDiePie started in 2019 and ended in 2020, with 13 total episodes to the series. Up next, we have World and Player Difficulty, which is just talking about the different game modes you make a player or world in, like Master Mode on your world or Hardcore on your player. After that, we have Official Lore, which is talking about the official Terraria lore that was released by ReLogic to celebrate the 8th anniversary of Terraria, which I already covered in detail in two different videos on my channel, so to save time, I won't touch it here. For the next entry, we have Evil Biomes, which is referring to the Corruption, Crimson, and Hello Biomes that slowly infect your world over time. Finally, getting to a somewhat interesting entry, we have references to other media, which is talking about things in the game which are references to other games or brands, when Terraria doesn't have an official collaboration with them, like Minecraft, Portal, and the plumber who will not be named for copyright reasons. After that, we have T-Mod Loader, which is the official and easiest way to find, download, and install mods for Terraria as of now. Up next, we have Random Generation, which is talking about how each world is randomly generated. For the next entry, we have Time, which is talking about how each day in Terraria is 24 minutes long. After that, we have Major Versions, which is referring to how there are currently five major updates to Terraria at the moment, with each one being marked by the version going up by 0.1. Next up, we have Music, which is talking about Terraria's music, which is extremely well-liked, especially by the Terraria community. Moving on to the second to last entry in this layer, we have enemies and bosses, which is referring to how there is an endless amount of different enemies and multiple bosses in Terraria. And for the final entry in the space layer, we have game progress, which is talking about how as you get stronger in the game, so do the enemies and bosses. Hello everybody, Waffle Time here, and right now you're about to be slapped in the face with the knowledge of Iceberg Layer 2, Electric Boogaloo, the tip of the mountain, which will be stuff that almost all Terraria players already know about. For the first entry in this layer, we have Terraria Otherworld, which was a spin-off game of Terraria that ended up getting cancelled due to ReLogic thinking the game wasn't something they wanted to publish. For the second entry, we have Old Gen Exclusive Content, which is referring to how old versions of Terraria had their own exclusive items, like the Worm's Pet and Ocrum. Next up, we have Secret Seeds, which is talking about the various special seeds in Terraria that'll generate a world in a special way, like the Remix Seed where you start in the Underworld, Next up, we have this roar file, which is talking about the sound that's played whenever you summon a boss. <laughs> After that, we have Dungeon Guardian, which is just talking about the skeleton boss that's in the dungeon. For the next entry, we have Cthulhu, which is referring to how Cthulhu is a part of Terraria throughout the lore. And for the second to last entry in the Slayer, we have a world barrier, which is talking about the world barriers that have some weird features, like you being able to hear the sound of certain blocks being hit beyond the barrier. And for the final entry in this layer, we have events, which is talking about the various events that can happen in the game, like Slime Rain or the Blood Moon. For the third layer in this iceberg, we have the Jungle Surface. And first up, we have the theory that the guide is the Wall of Flesh, which I covered more in my lore videos, so I won't go in depth on that here. For the second entry, we have the Green Cap, which is a vanity item based on Red's old avatar on the Terraria forums, with it dropping from guides named Andrew. For the third entry, we have Minecraft and Terraria, which is talking about both of the games having a positive relationship with each other, like Terraria's Creeper Vanity Set and Minecraft's Splash Text saying, also try Terraria. 
Next up, we have Ivy, which is talking about the special guitar item that can drop from steampunker NPCs named Whitney, which is a reference to the Terraria developer Cynex, who is the wife of Red, the creator of Terraria. After that, we have The Witch Doctor is a Lizard, which is talking about how he looks like one of the lizard people from the Jungle Temple, and will also say lines referencing the fact he's a lizard. Up next, we have the Eyes of Cthulhu on the box art, which is talking about how all three of the Eyes of Cthulhu have been featured in official Terraria art in the daytime, even though normally they can only spawn at nighttime. After that, we have Red's Potion, which is talking about the potion that would inflict 11 hurtful buffs to you, and was only obtainable through cheating as a way to punish hackers. Until it was made a normal potion in For the Worthy Worlds, where it gives random buffs that help you instead. Moving on, we have the Empress of Light Nose, which is talking about how a lot of people can confuse her nose as her mouth. After that, we have Queen Bee can immediately spawn, which is talking about how Queen Bee used to be able to automatically spawn as soon as you get into the world for the first time, but was luckily fixed. Next up, we have the Human Quack, which is talking about how the duck has a 1 in 300 chance to make a quack noise that was made by a human. Quack. Moving on to the next one, we have Companion Cube, which is talking about how the Companion Cube has two Easter eggs to go along with it, which I already covered in my Easter egg video, so I won't here for time's sake. Next up, we have Tutorial World Secrets, which is talking about how the old Tutorial World had secrets you could find, like two floating islands. After that, we have Luck, which is talking about how luck is a hidden stat in Terraria that affects almost everything in the game. Moving on, we have the Terra Blade Recipe, which is talking about how the Terra Blade's recipe got changed to include the Broken Hero Sword. Next up, we have Sunglasses Sun, which is talking about how the sun will revert back to its old version if you have sunglasses on. And finally, for the last entry on this layer, we have Game Trailer, which is talking about the first ever trailer made for Terraria, which got a lot of people interested in it. Hey guys, it's me, Lofi. You probably know me better as Smitty Warbin Jaegerman Jensen from Spongebob, here presenting you with Layer 4, The Underground Jungle. This is where you probably won't know any of these unless you've done some research outside of the game. Starting off with the first fractal. This was originally going to be the endgame sword as opposed to the zenith. It had auto-targeting, and it attacked by producing clones of the player wielding the sword to impale your enemies. But in the end, Relogic ended up going with the zenith instead, because, in their words, the first fractal didn't feel melee enough or endgame enough. So we made the sword a big boomerang instead, so now the first fractal has been left unobtainable, hidden and rotting away in the game files. Moving on to the second entry, we have Minecraft is 3D Terraria, which is just talking about how Terraria was released before Minecraft, making it technically possible that Minecraft is just a 3D version of Terraria. Up next, we have the Bride and the Groom Zombies are actually the Angler's parents, which is talking about how Red confirmed in a Discord message that the Bride and the Groom Zombies are in fact the Angler's parents. Now, if you ask me, don't ask me, because I don't want to think about that. Up next, we have the pre-1.3 developer items, which is talking about dev items that used to be unobtainable before 1.3. And how some had special effects like Red's wings allowing you to no clip. Up next, we have the overpowered Zappinator, which is talking about how the Zappinator used to be an extremely powerful, unobtainable weapon used by the developers to easily kill enemies during playtesting for the game. However, this item was later removed, being replaced by the two average versions of the Zappinator that we have today, which are sold by the traveling merchant. Moving on, we have the Steam trading cards. These are, like they sound, trading cards that you can obtain on Steam by playing a ton of different games, with them also having two different versions of each card, which is the normal version and the foil version. Ooh, shiny! Shiny. Shiny. Every time you get all of the normal cards for a game, you can use them to upgrade your Steam badge, with the final upgrade for Terraria being the Knight's Edge. Getting all the foil cards will only let you get one upgrade even if you get them all multiple times, with that badge being the true Knight's Edge. After that, we have the Torch God, which is a small mini-boss you can summon by placing 101 torches in a small area. This boss attacks you by shooting flames from the torches. Every time it fires, one of the torches goes out until they're all gone. Once extinguished, you've beat the boss and it will drop the Torch God's favor, which will give you the permanent effect of every Every torch you place becoming the biome specific version of it. For instance, if you place in the jungle biome, you get jungle torches. Honestly, this one's kinda cool. I never use it. Up next, we have Akram. This was made to be the final boss exclusive to the console editions. Akram was removed alongside a lot of other console exclusive content in a push to make the game the same across all platforms. Luckily though, Akram alongside a lot of other removed content can still be obtained and fought on Team Mod Loader by using the Consolaria mod. Moving on, we have Hoix. It's a glitch that Relogic decided to 
to leave in the game that allows you to move extremely fast and move through blocks. This can be used as a great way to get around your world, such as building elevators and stuff. I don't know why you wouldn't just use minecarts nowadays, but you could use this to kill the dungeon guardian, look it up, and is a very easy way to kill certain enemies. It also allows you to get into the jungle temple early, and a few other things as well. Next we have the Terrarian Legendary Prefix which is talking about how yo-yos can't normally have the legendary modifier since you can't change their speed, other than the Terrarian. After that we have Angler Immortality, which is talking about how the Angler NPC vanishes when he gets to low health instead of actually dying like the other NPCs, which is probably because, lore-wise, the Angler is a child. The next entry is Angel Statue Uselessness, which is talking about how it became a running joke that the Angel Statue had zero use, even less than the Mushroom Statue, which can glow if you plug it in. But in the 1.4.4 update, the Angel Statue was changed, with it now being able to to transform into an Aether Monolith if thrown into the Shimmer. This actually gives it a use and a pretty cool one. Up next, we have the Goblin Tinkerer is a Scammer. This is talking about the running joke that he gives you bad prefixes on purpose so that he can take a ton of your money, which is entirely true. Next, we have the Large Bomb, which is talking about how there's a bomb in the tutorial world that has a large prefix, making it one of the only legit non-weapon items to have a prefix. Moving on, we have the Overpowered Zoologist, which is just talking about how she has really strong attacks. After that, we have Luminite Tools, which is talking about how each pillar has a hammer, an axe, and a chainsaw that are all unobtainable. Terraria always gives you options for, like, tools and stuff you're able to use. There's already chainsaws in the game, there's already drills, there's already all that. I don't see why we wouldn't be allowed to have a chainsaw for each pillar. Besides, if somebody wanted to do a playthrough with maybe all chainsaws or something like that, wink, it could be a really fun addition to have at the end of the game. Relogic, if you see this, please add that back in. That'd be really cool. Up next, we have the Zenith has infinite range. The Zenith can move anywhere your cursor can meaning it technically has infinite range. After that, we have Planter Box Arena, which is talking about using planter boxes instead of platforms for your arenas, since they can grow herbs, allow lava to pass through them, and a few other helpful things. This actually makes arena building a lot easier, as you don't really run out of platforms this way. After that, we have Terraria and Dungeon Defenders 2, which is talking about the two games having an official collab with each other. This added things like the Old One's Army into Terraria, as well as adding the Dryad to Dungeon Defenders 2. Moving on, we have the Terra Toilet, which is talking about how it requires a broken hero sword to craft, which is normally for Pretty hard to find, seeing as you need to fight Mothron to get this, and is used for making the extremely useful Terra Blade. I personally don't play pure melee class all that often, so weirdly enough, it's not that uncommon that I make myself a Terra Toilet. After that, we have Otherworldly Music Boxes, which is talking about how you can get music boxes with the Otherworld soundtrack in the game. Terraria Otherworld was an unreleased Relogic game that was covered earlier in this video. Moving on, we have Curved Forges, which is talking about how furnaces would have a circle-like sprite in your inventory. This was until it was changed in the 1.2 update. Then we have the Locked Skyware Chest. Huh? Which is talking about how in the 1.2 update, the chests on floating islands were locked golden chests, meaning you could only unlock them with a key from the dungeon. To be honest, with the loot in there, it almost feels kind of fair even still. For the second to last entry of this layer, we have Lepus and Turkor the Ungrateful, which are both console and mobile exclusive bosses like Akram. But just like Akram, both were removed as well, in that attempt to make the game the same across all platforms. And for the last entry of this layer, we have Terraria and Don't Starve Together. This entry talks about the massive collaboration between the two games, which for time's sake I won't cover here, as Slam's already covered it in one of his past videos. Well that's gonna be it for me on Layer 4, I'm Lofi, and if you like the way I read this out, Slam kinda let me do whatever I want, so come and check out my channel, I think it'd be really cool if you came over. Moving on to the fifth layer now, we have the Beehive, which is where you probably won't know any of these unless you've been playing for a few years now. For the first entry, we have Terraria Chinese version, which is talking about how the Chinese version of Terraria has some major differences compared to our version, like exclusive items, collabs, and community events. After that, we have Bugged Boss Death Messages, which is talking about how certain death messages, like Moon Lord's Core has been defeated, used to have a chance to pop up after defeating other bosses. Next, we have the Lunatic Cultist Treasure Bag, which is talking about how the Lunatic Cultist has an unobtainable treasure bag, but it doesn't drop any special items other than a cultist mask. Moving on, we have the Old One's Army is Useless, which is talking about how the Terraria community views the Old One's Army as useless, since the rewards aren't too good at the point in the game when you're actually able to do the Old One's Army event. After that, we have Chlorophyte Spreading, which is talking about how this rare ore is able to spread to touching mud blocks and change them into Chlorophyte. Next, we have Terraria Collector's Edition, which is talking about a special version of PC Terraria that came with some Terraria merch, alongside being the only way to get the pet bunny without hacking your game. After that, we have Zombies Are Dead Players and NPCs, which shockingly is talking about the theory that zombies are dead players that came before you, and dead NPCs. 
Moving on, we have every update is the final update, which is talking about how ReLogic has been saying that every Terraria update is the final one for years now, even though they keep making more amazing updates. Next, we have pre-1.4 Wind, which is talking about how Wind used to do nothing other than aesthetics, up until the 1.4 update, where it was then turned into an event with special enemies. After that, we have Infinite Fishing Lures, which is just talking about how there used to be a glitch that would allow you to have multiple lures while fishing, letting you do things like summon multiple Duke fish runs at the same time. Up next, we have the Terrarian and Kraken are real, which is talking about Terraria collabing with one-drop yo-yos to make real-life versions of those yo-yos. After that, we have the Ancient Vision, which is an enemy that looks like a small golden Cthulhu and will only spawn once you hit a duplicate cultist during the lunatic cultist boss fight. Moving on, we have 1 in 80,000 Uzi, which is talking about how the Uzi originally had the rarest drop rate in the game at 1 in 80,000, but was later changed to be one of the most common, with a 1 in 100 chance. For the next entry, we have Mudball, which is an unused texture that looks looks like a mud ball, which might be getting used in the future 1.4.5 update, since we will be able to throw mud blocks at each other with a new feature. Moving on, we have the Skull Bow, which is just an unobtainable bow that has a skull on it. Next, we have Biome Key Molds, which were an old feature that allowed you to craft specific biome keys, but they ended up being removed in the 1.3 update. Moving on, we have Nimbus Rod Can't Have Ruthless, which is just talking about how that weapon isn't able to get the Ruthless modifier. After that, we have expert and master mode content in journey mode, which is talking about how you can get exclusive items from master and expert mode in journey mode, since you are able to change the world's difficulty at will. Next, we have the holy hand grenade, which was only on the old gen consoles and was the largest bomb in the game alongside dealing the most damage out of any bomb, but it was removed alongside the other console exclusive item. Up next, we have golfer is Zoologist's brother, which is talking about how messages from Red point towards the golfer being the Zoologist's brother lore-wise. Moving on, we have Removed Negative Torch Lock. This is talking about how placing a torch that wasn't matching the biome you were in would hurt your luck stat but because of a Reddit post that gave this feature a lot of backlash, it was removed. After that, we have Oktoberfest, which is talking about a small event that was on only mobile and 3DS versions of Terraria, and allowed you to get two vanity sets alongside a drink. Next, we have Terraria Edge of Space, which is talking about the official collab between the two games, which ended up giving us one of the best weapons in the game, the SDMG. Moving on, we have The Legend of Max, which is an online fan comic about Terraria that's been going on for years. This comic became so well known at one point that ReLogic ended up adding something into Terraria from the comic, which was the Hammer Shammer. Next, we have Duck Entity Capping, which is talking about how you used to be able to use a duck statue over water to eventually max out every spawn slot available with ducks allowing you to instantly win boss fights, among other things. The duck glitch specifically was patched, but you can still do this with bunny, goldfish, or penguin statues during a blood moon, so it's not totally gone. Moving on, we have Ancient Set Origins, which is talking about how the armor set seems to resemble the Egyptian god Anubis. Up next, we have Old Floating Islands, which is talking about how the floating islands used to look like floating forest biomes with ores on them, before eventually being changed to the cloud-like floating islands we know today. After that, we have Typical King Slime on Pinky's Revenge, which is talking about a super old Terraria YouTube video, where a group of players are fighting huge versions of King Slime and Pinky. Then we have Wood Broken with an Axe, which is talking about how up until the 1.2 to update, you would need to use an axe to break placed wood, with it now being broken with a pickaxe. And kind of along the same lines, the next entry is Life Crystals Broken with Hammers, which is talking about how you could only break Life Crystals with Hammers up until the 1.2 update. Moving on, we have Rocket Boots and Mana, which is talking about how the Rocket Boots used to use your mana to make you fly, but was later replaced by a standalone timer in the 1.0.5 update. 
After that, we have Orb of Light, which is talking about how the Shadow Orb Light pet used to be completely different, with it having a yellowish tint to it, while also acting slightly different. For the second to last entry in the Slayer, we have the Zenith is the Worst Weapon, which is talking about how the Zenith is technically the worst weapon in the game, since it takes so much to make it, while also only being available to you after you beat the game. And finally, for the last entry in the Slayer, we have Upcoming content slash archives, which is talking about how ReLogic will often hide upcoming features in their posts, like this one, which has two new whips coming in the 1.4.5 update hidden in it. Moving on to the sixth layer now, we have the Jungle Caverns, which is where the entries will start to get you weird looks if you try to talk about them in real life. For the first entry, we have this error message, which I sadly couldn't find any information on, and the iceberg didn't have anything on it either. For the second entry, we have Wither Spawning Mechanic, which is talking about Jeb, who helped create Minecraft, saying that the Wither Spawn Mechanic was inspired by Terraria's boss spawning mechanics. For the third entry, we have Icemorn, Scythe, and Soul Scythe. These were all weapons that were added in the early days of Terraria, but removed in the 1.2 update for copyright reasons, since the Icemorn was from World of Warcraft, and the other two were from an anime. After that, we have Old Plumbers and Heroes Clothes, which is talking about how those two vanity sets had their colors changed to purple for the old generation consoles, which most likely happened because of copyright reasons again. Moving on, we have Scrap wrapped Chinese New Year event. Just like it sounds, this was an event based on the Chinese New Year holiday and added in a new vanity set. A new NPC named Mick Money Pants, who would have sold you items during the event, and a new dragon mini boss as well. And while that event never came to our version of Terraria, it was fully added to the Chinese version of Terraria. Next, we have Jungle Mimic, which is talking about how the jungle variant of the Mimics was an unspawnable enemy for a long time, before eventually being added to the Celebration Secret Seed alongside the Golden Slime, with that seed still being the only way they can spawn naturally today. Moving on, we have the Order of the Guide, which is talking about how the official lore of Terraria says that the guide in your world is a part of a group named Order of the Guide, which passes down the knowledge of the world to one another. After that, we have You Are the Villain. This is a fan theory, which is about the idea that you are actually seen as a threat in the game, since the Hallow is meant to destroy anything it views as a threat and the enemies there make sure to hurt you whenever they can. Next, we have Moon Lord is Cthulhu, which is talking about how there are a few fan theories out there about the connection between Moon Lord and Cthulhu lore-wise, with the official lore saying that Moon Lord is Cthulhu, while some developers have said things along the lines of Moon Lord being Cthulhu's brother, and that Moon Lord's actual name is Steve, but those were most likely just jokes. Moving on, we have Super Mario Bros. X. This was a game made by Red before he made Terraria, and was a fan game where you could build your own Mario levels, but it ended up getting shut down, which led Red to eventually making Terraria. After that, we have The Demolitionist is a Dwarf, which is talking about the fact that the Demolitionist NPC is called a dwarf in the bestiary, and also has a few names of famous dwarves from movies like Lord of the Rings. Up next, we have Old Player Sprites were based off of Final Fantasy IV, sprites, which is talking about how the original Terraria player sprites were heavily inspired by the sprites in Final Fantasy IV. Moving on, we have Hard Mode Dungeon Enemies Are Fallen Heroes, which is talking about the fan theory that Hard Mode Dungeon Enemies are past players that failed, since they have various weapons that are odd for enemies to have, like snipers. Up next, we have Yermir ARG. Like I mentioned earlier in this iceberg, Yermir was one of the most popular Terraria YouTubers for the longest time before disappearing. But after roughly 700 days of him not uploading a video, he started an ARG by posting a video with a secret code in it that would lead you to an adventure map that was pretty tricky to complete, which would then finally lead you to this new unlisted video Yermir posted. Moving on, we have five angel statue IDs. 
this is talking about how the angel statue item actually has five item IDs instead of one like most items, which is because they used the angel statue to replace certain removed items. After that, we have White Cultist, which is talking about how in the game we only see blue versions of the cultist, but there's actually an unused white version of them in the game's files as well. Next, we have Wraiths are dead NPCs, which is talking about how the Wraith trading card that came with the collector's edition of Terraria had a bit of lore on it, which stated that Wraiths are those who died because of the Eater of Worlds. Up next, we have Nanana's Buried Treasure, which is talking about about how that anime featured a clip of a character playing Terraria. Moving on, we have Shiny Black Slab, which is talking about the Android pet that was meant to be exclusive to Android versions of the game, but can also be found in the 3DS versions as well. Up next, we have Tim Manifests When Needed, which is talking about how Tim has a higher chance to spawn when you're wearing a gem robe since he will always drop a wizard hat when killed. After that, we have the Boring Bow, which is an unobtainable bow named the Boring Bow, which has zero stats, won't shoot arrows at all, and also can't be placed in weapon frames like other weapons. Next, we have Knight's Edge Toy Inaccuracy, which is talking about how the toy version of the Knight's Edge looked pretty different from the original version of it inside the game. Moving on, we have Terraria Otherworld was cancelled intentionally, which is talking about how a few people think that the game was cancelled to keep the sales of the original Terraria up. Up next, we have Vertigo Challenge, which is when you try to beat the game upside down for the entire game using the gravitation buff. After that, we have Cthulhu Ocean JPEG, which is talking about this screenshot of what appears to be Cthulhu in Terraria, but was actually concept art made by a sprite artist who worked with Relogic up until around 2012. Next, we have Old Gen Pets Dealing Damage, which is talking about how the old console and mobile exclusive pets were able to deal damage to enemies, but I also want to mention that some could also double as a light pet, and one was even able to drop you money. Moving on, we have Terraria 2, which is a sequel to Terraria that Red has been talking about for years at this point, but at the moment, it's not confirmed if it will ever come out or not. Up next, we have the Mysterious Package, which was an unobtainable Amazon drone pet that was meant to be an exclusive item to Amazon devices but it was sadly never officially added to the game. After that, we have Terraria Pixel Piracy, which is talking about how the games, which are both published by Relogic, had an official collaboration, which is where Terraria gets the pirate staff and a few other items from. Next, we have Pre-Hard Mode Halo, which is talking about how you can technically have the biome in your world before you get into hard mode, but you will need to get the seeds or solution for that biome from another world that's already in hard mode. Moving on, we have the Merchant Can Predict the Eye of Cthulhu, which is talking about how that NPC will sometimes say that he feels an evil presence is watching him, which will only happen when you have all of the natural spawn requirements for the Eye of Cthulhu. Up next, we have 120 billion seeds, which is just talking about how there are an estimated 120 billion different seeds for Terraria worlds in total. After that, we have Clown Bomb Destruction, which is talking about how the Blood Moon enemy's bomb used to be able to break blocks, but luckily this was later changed in the 1.2 update to make it only deal damage. Moving on, we have Corruptor Corruption Spreading, which is talking about how, before the 1.2 update, the Corruptor's Vile Spit Projectile used to be able to infect blocks that it touched. Up next, we have Pre-T Mod Loader Mods, which is talking about how there is a rich history of different mods and mod loaders for Terraria before T Mod Loader came out, like the Thorium Mod and the T Config Mod Loader. After that, we have Eerie in the Dungeon, Corruption, and Underworld, which is talking about how this music track used to originally be played in those three locations, but was later changed to only play when you're near a fallen meteorite. Next, we have Orange Corruption Sky, which is talking about how in the early versions of the game, including the leaked versions and some early trailers, the sky in the corruption is orange instead of the purple it is today. Moving on, we have Purple Spelunker Ore Effect, which is talking about how the Spelunker Potion would highlight ores in a purple tint instead of the more yellowish tint we have today. Up next, we have Vortex is a Black Hole, which is talking about the theory that the Vortex Pillar is a black hole, since it's able to open portals to other places to let 
let enemies through. But this actually goes one step further than the iceberg talks about, with the wiki saying that each pillar represents a stage in a sun's life cycle, with solar obviously being a living star, vortex being the death of the star, stardust being the remains of the star, and finally, the nebula one representing a new star being formed. And finally, for the last entry on this layer, we have Japanese exclusive content. Kind of like the Chinese version of Terraria, the Japanese version has a few exclusive items of its own, which are the following vanity set I have on screen now, alongside a new thread item you use to craft those vanity items. Now we are on to layer 7, which is the Lizard Temple. And this is where you will only know any of these if you've researched everything you can about Terraria for years. For the first century, we have Red Removed Akram, which is talking about how the console-exclusive boss was eventually removed from the versions it was in, because Red found the boss to be unengaging. For the second entry, we have the cultist plotted Cthulhu's return, Mechanic Kidnapping, which is talking about how the lore states the cultist kidnapped the mechanic to make her fix or build the mechanical parts of Cthulhu, which is the backstory for the three, or technically four, mechanical bosses in the game. For the third entry, we have the Dread Nautilus was meant to be a boss, which is talking about how the mini-boss that can be fished up during the Blood Moon seemingly was meant to be a boss, because of things like the fact it has an achievement for beating it, it has supporting enemies, and a few other things, with a developer even coming out and saying that even though they had a tough time deciding on if it should be an event boss or just a mini-boss, it seems like they eventually sided with mini-boss, since it's lacking a health bar like all of the other bosses in the game. After after that, we have the Corruption Reanimates Dead People, which the iceberg says is how, in the lore, the corruption is often treated like a god, so much so that the people make sacrifices to it, which turn those people into blind zombies who follow every order of the hive mind. But that's the lore for the Crimson Biome instead, so I think there's a slight mistake there, alongside with the next one as well, which is the Crimson is a hive mind. This entry seems to be talking about the lore of the corruption instead, which is referred to as a cancer on the world that's fueled by the sins from people in that Terraria world, with the first goal of it being to destroy everything it touches, and the end goal being to restore life once it has fully destroyed everything. Moving on now, we have Terraria Special Edition, which, not to be confused with Collector's Edition, was a special release of Terraria for the PS4 and Xbox One, and came with a sew-on wizard patch, some stickers, and an art card featuring some one battling the twins. After that, we have Queen Bee Beta Sprite, which is talking about how Queen Bee originally looked like this, which is honestly probably the biggest glow up any Terraria sprite has had. Next, we have All Glowing Mushrooms Are Children, which is talking about how Truffle makes a few comments implying that All Glowing Mushrooms are actually his kids. Moving on, we have Be Safe, Terraria Needs You, which is a quote from the Dryad that's slightly interesting, because it's one of the only times an NPC says Terraria instead of your world's name. Up next, we have Exploding Snowman, which is talking about how there is an unused snowman entry that could explode. And while it was never used in our version of the game, it was featured in the official Chinese Terraria website's minigame, which I'll cover later on in this video. After that, we have Moon Smiley, which is talking about a style of the moon that is only featured in the 9th Anniversary Secret Seed. Next, we have Heart Crystals and Metal Detectors, which is talking about how metal detectors can find life crystals, leading some to theorize that they are made out of metal. Moving on, we have Terraria is inside a Terrarium, which is talking about the theory that your Terraria world is actually inside of a Terrarium, which would explain things like the world borders. Up next, we have The Guide is the Ninja's Brother, which is talking about, based on Red's messages, it seems that the guide is actually the brother of the ninja stuck inside of King Slime. After that, we have The Dungeon Was Once a City, which is talking about how the lore states the dungeon was once a city that was full of life, until a curse made everyone go mad. Then we have Severed Hand, which was a cut enemy from the solar eclipse, with it even having its own banner but I couldn't find anything else on it, sadly. Moving on, we have Terraria Worms 3, which is talking about how the two games had an official collaboration that was only on mobile and 3DS versions. 
with Terraria getting things like the Worm Pet, the Strange Tombstone, and the Holy Hand Grenade, but it was later removed, alongside all the other console-exclusive items. Up next, we have Mud Physics, which is talking about how mud was updated to work like sand for a very short time, before eventually being changed back to how it is today. But we will kind of get this feature back in the next update with Mud Balls, which are a small ranged weapon we can throw. After that, we have Seedler Fishing, which is talking about how, for a short time in 1.3, you were able to fish up the Seedler Sword that's normally a Plantera-only drop at any time in the jungle. Next, we have Paper Bat VG, which is allegedly the first ever non-developer to make a Let's Play of the game. Next, we have The Merchant is a Father, which is a theory some people believe because in the painting named Father of Someone, the father seems to resemble the merchant. Moving on, we have Terraria lore is false or misleading, which is what some people believe because they think it makes no sense. But I don't think the lore was ever meant to be taken that seriously in the first place. Up next, we have Pre-Hard Mode Crystal Shards, which is talking about how Archdemons used to be able to drop Crystal Shards in the mobile version, before eventually being removed, alongside the other console-exclusive items and features. After that, we have Burning Skull, which is talking about the Cursed Skull originally looking like this, alongside having its name being Burning Skull, before eventually being changed to the Cursed Skull we have today, in one of the first updates to the game. Next, we have Non-Explodable Ebonstone which is talking about how Ebonstone wasn't able to be blown up until the 1.1 update. Moving on, we have Pre-Hard Mode Drax, which is talking about how on certain platforms you were able to find the Drax in Shadow Chests before Hard Mode. But this was later changed once the Hallowed Bars recipe was put into the game. Up next, we have Big Boned Short Boned, which is talking about how Skeletons used to be named that up until the 1.2 update. After that, we have Blood Nautilus, which was the original name for the Dread Nautilus, which can be seen in the official Journey's End trailer. And for the second to last journey for the lair, we have unused trapped chests, which is talking about how there are multiple unobtainable trapped chests, which are all fully functional. And finally, for the last entry in this lair, we have Deerclop's Leg, which is talking about how the 1.4.3 update added in an unobtainable NPC named Deerclop's Legged, and seemed to be an early version of what Deerclop's leg would actually become. Now, we're on the 8th layer, which is the Deep Caverns layer. And for our first entry, we have the Fire Flower in the Underworld, which is talking about how in the bottom right corner of Worlds on the 3DS, you can find a Fire Flower from Mario. For the second entry, we have Terraria Worlds are Sentient, which is talking about how the lore says every world is technically alive, like the evil biomes I mentioned earlier. And speaking of evil biomes, the third entry in this layer is the Hallow's Curse, which is talking about how the lore says that the Hallow tries to kill everything it deems as a threat to ensure the balance of life, including you. Moving on, we have the Great War of Cthulhu, which is talking about how, in the lore, a group of Dryads tried to defeat Cthulhu in a Great War, but instead only ended up heavily damaging him, while also killing every Dryad other than one, which is the one you get in your world. Up next, we have the Lunar Pillars Are Illusions, which is talking about how the pillars have default messages that mention your mind going numb, while you're also hearing voices, which could imply that the pillars are just illusions set up by the cultist. After that, we have the traveling merchant selling 11 items at once, which is one of the rarest things that can happen in the game, with it having only a 1 in 98,300 chance of happening. Next, we have the poisonous spore, which is an unused enemy in the game's files that doesn't have a sprite, but does have a banner. To go along with that entry, the next one is Nun 2, which is an unused enemy that we do have the sprite for, but it just looks like like the Wandering Eye enemy. And to end off the unused enemies, our next entry is Mini Flow Invader, which is an unused enemy that looks exactly like Projectile 539, which is the projectile shot out by the Flow Invaders, implying that the projectile might have been planned to be its own enemy at one point. Moving on, we have Roar 2, which is an unused sound file that sounds like this. <coughs> 
Up next, we have the Obsessed 4chan player, which is talking about a person on 4chan who claimed he had over 5,000 Terraria characters that he used to do intense roleplay, with each character having their own stories and traits. Up next, we have Zombie AI is 3,000 lines of code, which is talking about how the zombie enemy has over 3,000 lines of code, which is wild to think about when all it does is jump. After that, we have Dazed, which is an unused buff that would decrease your jump height and speed. Next, we have Unobtainable Achievements, which is talking about the four achievements that are in the game but unobtainable as of now, which are Pumpkin Smasher, Independence Day, Behind the Mask, and Education. Moving on, we have Phasic Warp Ejector, which is an unused item that had this sprite and had a disc sprite to go along with it which might imply that this was gonna be a ranged weapon of some sorts. Up next, we have The Corruption is Nyarlathotep, which is talking about how the lore behind the corruption resembles the Lovecraftian god that would gain followers who would slowly lose their minds. And speaking of lore, our next entry is The Lamentation of Moonlord, which is a fan's in-depth take on trying to create lore for Terraria before there was anything officially out. After that, we have Terraria was a Super Mario Bros. mod, which is a theory some people have, where they think Terraria was originally a mod of Red's first game, Super Mario Bros. X. Next, we have Player Name Was Slain, which is talking about how the death messages used to include your player's name, instead of it just saying you like it does. Moving on, we have the Eye of Cthulhu dropping life crystals, which is talking about how the Eye of Cthulhu used to drop life crystals in the leaked versions of Terraria, but once it was officially released, the life crystals were removed from its loot pool. Up next, we have Extra Bone Serpent Drops, which is talking about how the Bone Serpent used to drop the Flame Lash and Sun Fury, but in the 1.0.6 update, they were removed from the Bone Serpent's loot pool and only made obtainable through Shadow Chests but then were also later made available through obsidian locked boxes and hellstone crates. After that, we have life crystals slash normal pots in the underworld, which is talking about how in early versions of Terraria, the underworld had normal pots and life crystals appear in it, but was later changed to not have any life crystals and underworld themed pots. Next, we have hornets were originally gonna be mantid flies, which is talking about how there are apparently early sprites showing the hornet enemies looking more like mantid flies, but I couldn't find them myself, sadly. After that, we have pre-release Terraria sprites, which is talking about how the leaked version of the game had a lot of placeholder sprites, like the Final Fantasy player sprites. Next, we have Lava Knockback, which is talking about how, for a short time, lava used to be able to have a knockback effect on you once you hit, but I couldn't find anything to back this up. And I also couldn't find anything on the next entry either, which is claiming that, for a very short period of time, health potions used to be green instead of red. Moving on, we have Hallow Seeds from Demon Altars, which is talking about how, in a trailer for the 1.1 version of the game, you can see Hallow Seeds drop from a Demon Altar, which probably happened because every item needs to drop something for the code to work, so Hallow Seeds were most likely used as a placeholder. Up next, we have Item 1 and 2 Chests, which is talking about two odd, unobtainable chests chests that will freeze your character once you hover your mouse over them, give you god mode from physical attacks, and also remove your vanity set. After that, we have unused beach grass, which is talking about how there is grass made specifically for the beach biomes that ended up going unused. And for the second to last entry in this layer, we have the split shot core, which is an unused projectile from the Empress of Light that will break up into other smaller projectiles once spawned in. And for the final entry in this layer, we have unused bestiary filters, which is talking about how there are filter options for Oasis, Blizzard, Hard Mode, Slime Rain, and Item Spawn, but they all went unused for whatever reason. For the second to last layer, we have the Hellish Caverns. For the first entry, we have the leaked beta of Terraria. This happened in 2011 while Terraria was still in development and unreleased and someone figured out that they could download an old version from the website which led to this version of Terraria spreading everywhere online, and eventually caused Relogic to release the game early as the version that was leaked made Terraria look bad. Next up, we have DD2 Attacker Test, which appears to be a test enemy from the Old Ones Army Invasion. After that, we have Noise.png, which refers to a file in Terraria that looks like colorful static. 
The next one is the impending doom shake metaphor, which refers to the idea that the screen shake that happens while Moon Lord is spawning is how it feels when your heart starts beating faster due to the impending doom. After that, we have What Happened to Yaramir, which refers to a popular Terraria YouTuber who made playthrough and boss challenge videos that ended up disappearing about five years ago with the reason still not really being known to this day. Moving on, we have Missing World Seeds, which is referring to the fact that secret seeds like the Celebration one use a different seed system than the normal worlds, meaning those seeds used for the secret seed worlds actually have normal worlds. We just can't get to them. Next up, we have the Vulcan Repeater team killing, which is talking about how the Vulcan Repeater had a special arrow that could kill everything around it with an explosion shot, including teammates. After that, we have most items are unobtainable, which refers to how almost every item could technically be unobtainable due to how worlds work in Terraria. The next entry is actually a special one, which is randomly generated secret seed worlds, which is talking about the fact you have a very small chance to get a secret seed world randomly during world generation, with there even being the chance to get two of the same secret world seeds in one world. But there was at least some talk of adding a feature to combine secret seeds in 1.4.5 anyway. Up next, we have an old skeleton sprite, which refers to how the skeleton enemy had its sprite changed quite a bit. Next up, we have Aaron C141 sprite sheet, which is talking about how in 2013, Relogic hired a new sprite artist, and to go along with this, they released the sprite sheet, which had multiple unreleased items, some of which never made it into the game, like this very, very detailed silver sword. After that, we have You Wake Up From A Strange Dream, which is some in-game text found hidden in the files which seems to be from a scrapped event. And for the final layer in this section, we have Unused Deadly Spear Form, which is referring to the unused sprite for the Deadly Spear minion. And for the final official layer in this video, before I start going over the things I feel like this iceberg missed, we have the Underworld, with our first entry being the Other Guardians. This refers to how the game says the Wall of Flesh is a guardian, but doesn't say the Wall of Flesh is the guardian that lets out the spirits of light and evil, implying that they come from other guardians from other worlds. After that, we have all paintings combined, which refers to the idea that there is an image to make if you combine all of the Terraria paintings in a certain way, but if it is a thing, it sadly hasn't been found yet. And for the final entry in this section, we have this file name that I'm not going to try and pronounce, which doesn't have any information to go along with it on the iceberg site, but here's everything I could find on it. The best theory right now is that it's just a joke file added in by the developers that doesn't really have anything in it. Another theory that I saw was that it's a file for a specific smartwatch, which is interesting, knowing that Terraria did almost have a smartwatch at some point. Outside of those two ideas though, there are a few more that people have passed around, but nothing that seems likely. So we'll end this section here. And finally, for the very last section in this video, we have all of the things that I felt like this iceberg missed. These entries aren't in specific order, so you might end up already knowing some of these. First up, we have Terraria 3D, which is a fan project that aims to make a fully 3D version of Terraria. This game is being made by one person, so it may take a bit longer than you're expecting for it to fully release, but you can keep up with the development of it on the creator's YouTube channel, which I have on screen now. After that, we have another Terraria Terraria game called Branches. This was a mobile version of Terraria made by a fan before Terraria officially released there, which ended up happening shortly after Branches came out. Next up, we have the real life Meowmir. Just like this entry sounds, this is a $300 real life version of the Meowmir made by Fire and Steel, which Waffle Time just happens to own. So here's him holding it. After that, we have the Game Band Smartwatch, which was gonna be a smartwatch that would have allowed you to play Terraria on it, but it never ended up coming out. Moving on, we have the 2022 Jingle Jam Secret Seed. This was a map released by Red through Chippy and showed off the future 1.4.5 feature of being able to combine secret seeds together, with it being a mix of the five seeds I have on screen now. Not too long after Chippy put it on the Steam Workshop though, he ended up making his Steam private for personal reasons, which also took the world file off the workshop. So if you want to play it, you will need to use a re-uploaded world, like the one I have on screen now. 
or if you're on mobile, you can get the world file from my Discord server. After that, we have the raw queen slime sprite, which looks like this, without the code that changes the sprite's color. Next, we have the official Terraria trading cards that came with the special editions of the game, which featured some of the enemies and NPCs. Moving on, we have Mimics and Queen Bee, which is talking about how you can use Mimics to almost instantly kill Queen Bee, since Queen Bee uses the same AI style as Hornets, which attack Mimics. Up next, we have the official Chinese Terraria website, which featured a minigame where you could beat enemies by clicking on them and it ended up having the unused exploding snowman enemy in it for whatever reason. Speaking of Japanese Terraria, for the next entry, we have Wall of Flesh in first person mode, which is talking about how the PS Vita version of Terraria has a loading screen where you're looking at the Wall of Flesh from a first person perspective, which is one of the only times we have ever seen official art in the first person perspective. And finally, for the last entry in this entire video, we have the transmutation glitch, which is a super powerful glitch that allows you to spawn in any item using a special setup, even including unobtainable items, like the god mode chests I covered earlier in this video. That wraps up our look into the ultimate Terraria iceberg. While these were just what me and a few others think are largely unknown Terraria info, be sure to let me know in the comments if you have anything you think deserves to be in. Thanks for sticking all the way until the end. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Terraria videos like this in the future. And as always, make sure to have a wonderful day.